is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Emily Ferrier, here to bring you my favorite weird news stories of the past few days. Starting us off this week, a Massachusetts woman became an unexpected getaway driver after a man she met on a dating app robbed a bank on their first date. Christopher Castillo the unnamed woman would-be's Robin Hood, uh, pled guilty this week to armed robbery and three counts of assault and battery on a police officer, all committed on their first date, according to the Bristol County District Attorney's Office. Castillo was sentenced to three years in state prison for the robbery, plus two years at Bristol County House Uh, of corrections for violently struggling against and spitting on a police officer who tried to subdue him, according to the district attorney's office. The woman wasn't charged. The worst date ever story was punishment enough. Uh, How the date began. It all started when the woman told police when she uh, picked up Castillo from uh, his parents' home in Chepichet. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, sorry. Rhode Island and drove uh, 30 minutes east towards no- North Attleboro, Boro, Massachusetts. She said that he drank wine in the passenger seat of her Nissan Maxima, which is illegal, but he wasn't charged for that one. I guess they let that slide. Uh, the two had never met in person before that day, she told the police. So why would she think anything was wrong um, when he told her to pull over as they approached the bank. Uh, He got out of the car and he left her there alone for a few minutes. Then suddenly he came running back, sweating with his glasses, a hat, a gun, and a thousand dollars of cash in hand. And the woman said, oh, and then he said, effing go. She panicked and uh, did as she had to do. Her date told the bank teller that he was really hurting. The district attorney's office uh, fired blanks uh, on what was happening while he was inside the bank. Oh, sorry, filled in the blanks, not filed blanks. Oh, what, what was I saying? Filled in the blanks. So Castillo walked into the Bristol County Savings Bank branch in North Attleboro Boro, uh, and showed the bank teller a gun. He demanded a $1,000 and said that he needed it badly because he was really hurting. The teller handed him the money and then ran back to his date's maxima in order for her to step on it. Uh, His accidental accomplice obeyed at first, but when she spotted flashing lights from the police cruisers, she immediately pulled over and walked away from the car. Castillo stayed inside and tucked away from police. Police pulled Castillo out of that hapless date's car, and he violently struggled, spit on them, and told them that his gun wasn't loaded, according to the district attorney's office. After he was subdued and handcuffed, police searched the car and found a 44 caliber handgun, uh, an antique belonging to Castillo's stepfather. The hat and sunglasses matched the description of what the, wa- the robber was wearing. And uh, the $1,000 the police found in his wallet years after the date from hell um, Castillo was sentenced to five years of incarceration. His date got off without a charge. Probably a little bit of skepticism towards dating. Uh, this is uh, because of Valentine's Day having just passed us. Um, 
And uh, just because of that, we're going to roll on and continue with a few other first weird first date stories from the old internet. This one's called Till Death Do Us Part. We went for a drive. We stopped at a cemetery about 11 p.m. We were holding hands and reading tombstones in the light of the moon. Strange, but kind of sweet, seeing all these husbands and wives buried together. The date was good, but we never ended up together. Bit weird. Bit weird, don't we think? Yeah? Um, don't think that you should be taking your date to the graveyard. Um, my husband and I had our first date at a gay bar. We originally met up at a dueling piano bar, but it was too loud. Gay bar was a lot of fun. A couple of guys kept interjecting into our conversations with hilarious comments, such as, Oh, she's so into you. And, uh, telling me, telling my date that he should be a model. It was a wonderful first date, and we've now been married a year. That's nice. Uh, Soul Train, this one's called Soul Mate Train. One of my first dates was basically on the subway. There was an art exhibition with mosaics, sculptures, and murals located uh, through the entire NYC subway system. Went on a first date with this guy where the goal was to see the newly installed art pieces throughout the city. Uh, the date asked, it lasted over 12 hours, most of which was spent in the subway. Plenty of time to get to know each other. He decided to keep things platonic after that, but... Still one of the most uh, amazing dates I've ever had. Well, if you'd kept it platonic, it probably wasn't the best. A guy took me to this really upscale neighborhood last night, and we snuck into a huge house that was being built and definitely didn't belong to anyone we knew. It was kind of exciting knowing that we could get into trouble if we got caught. We just wandered around, made up stories about that house as if it was part of our home, picking out imaginary tile and discussing imaginary furniture layouts. It was so much fun and definitely one of the best first dates I've ever had. I know nothing about science, and this guy took me to a computer developer meet and greet with fun techie dudes. As he was showing me an upcoming project, two obviously drunk guys came up and hit on me while my date was right there. Totally felt out of place and uncomfortable when my date took me to a bar with a more relaxed atmosphere. And we're going on our third date soon. Um, I went to a bug zoo in Victoria, B.C. on a first date. Get to learn about lots of creepy crawlies, old tarantulas, and scorpions. Thought it was a great date. Wanted a few more after that. Uh, I went out with a guy for the first time at Six Flags Great Adventure. We had totally different game plans for the day. All he wanted to do was go on a Superman ride while I just wanted to keep eating Dippin' Dots. Must have been right after or Oprah endorsed them. Uh, we, did a lo we did a little of both activities, but he was a little too... Adventurous for me. Boing. Uh, we went for a silent massage. Didn't make sense as we didn't get to talk, but hey, good massage. That's not really want what you want as a review at your end of your date. Uh, I have a couple of uh, weird first date stories um, that are mine personally and not from the internet. I once went on a first date where I was robbed. Um, I... Kind of knew the guy. He was a friend of a friend, mutual friend. He picked me up um, on the way to our date, as it was like on the way. And he asked if I could go with him to drop off a couch for his friend. So he went, we went to drop off the couch. And as we left the car, he forgot to lock it. And somebody stole my bag right out of the car. Um, and then uh, I was so upset because there was like uh, a lot of my like stuff that I couldn't replace, like notebooks and a hat that my grandma made me. Um, and then I looked to the left, and, and all my stuff was skewed on the street. So, like, the guy had just ripped open all my stuff. So we ended up just, like, going on a scavenger hunt for my things, and it ended up being a great date. So, you know, weird first dates can be good. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, some weird laws. And, uh... What what they're doing in the state of Alabama um, to men's bodies. So, you know, 
Get ready for that. When we return. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back. Before the break, we shared some weird news stories. Even I shared my weird news stories, so that was kind of fun for me. Uh, now, we go to Alabama for uh, a weird law. Weird laws come up a lot. Alabama's lawmaker's bill would force men to get vasectomies at 50. State representative from Birmingham failed to pa- pass a... Is it Birmingham or Birmingham? In Alabama. Let me know. Uh, filed a bill on Thursday that would require Alabama men to get a vasectomy once they reach the age of 50 years old or father three children, whichever comes first. Legislation by step by state rep Rolanda Hollis uh, says that man a man will have to pay for the vasectomy at his own expense. Uh, the bill is apparently in response to last year's abortion bill that passed a legislator that included a near total ban on abortion. The vasectomy bill is to help with the reproductive system and, yes, to neutralize the abortion ban bill. It always takes two to tango, she said. We can't put the responsibility on women. Men need to be responsible also. Uh, Hollis explained that she's both pro-life and pro-choice. I do not believe that women should use abortion as birth control, but I do believe that if a woman, um, you know, is forced or incest or things like that, she has the right to choose what she needs to do. Um, in October, the federal judge blocked the bill from going into effect. While courts addressed the challenges to the legislation, the bill would only make abortion legal um, if the life of the mother is in danger. So uh, that's a weird one. That's a weird one, the uh, forced vasectomy. Although I was just talking to a friend about... Um, this thing about rhinos and how, like, men get aggressive when they get older for rhinos. So, um, you know, they should take out them. Uh, so I just, it's because of this news story coming out, I thought about other weird laws. So there's a couple of weird laws from every state. Um, just one weird law from every state. So here are the weird laws from all 50 states. Alabama. Bear wrestling matches are prohibited. The best thing about these is that in order for them to be a thing, somebody must have done them, right? Alaska, moose may not be viewed from an airplane. So, you know, avert your eyes when you're flying over Alaska. It's illegal to promote the use uh, of your own or your own more than six dildos in Arizona. In Arkansas, it's strictly prohibited to pronounce Arkansas incorrectly. That's a law. California animals are banned from mating publicly within 1,500 feet of a tavern school or place of worship. So, you know, lock them up. In Colorado, one may not uh, mutilate a rock in a state park. In Connecticut, it's illegal for a barber to hum a tune while cutting your hair. In Delaware, alcohol may not be served in nightclub if dancing is occurring on the premises at the same time. That's nearly impossible. In Florida, sexual relations with a porcupine is illegal. That sounds painful. In Georgia, no one may carry an ice cream cone in their back pocket as if it's Sunday, specifically Sunday. Hawaii, coins are not meant, not allowed to be placed on one's ear. In Idaho, dirt may not be swept from one's house into the street. In Illinois, 
Those under 21 can drink legally, but they must be enrolled in a culinary program to do so. So if you're having a little wine to balance out the meal. In Indiana, no one may catch a fish with his or her bare hands, unless they are a bear. In Iowa, ministers may obtain a permit to carry their liquor across state lines. In Kansas, hitting a vending machine that stole your money is illegal. Vending machine writes, Kentucky, one may not dye a duckling blue and offer it for sale unless there's more for more than six for sale at once. So make sure you're getting those other five in. In Louisiana, $500 fine to instruct a pizza delivery man to deliver a pizza to your friend without them knowing it. I think d- deliver all the pizzas to me you want, guys. In Maine, advertisements may not be placed in cemeteries. Okay, they're trying to rest. In Maryland, uh, persons may not swear while on the highway. Massachusetts, candy may not contain more than 1% of alcohol. So that ruins those alcoholic chocolates. In Michigan, no man may seduce to corrupt an unmarried girl. Ooh, Michigan. Or else he risks five years in prison. Seduce and corrupt. I feel like the Fifty Shades of Grey offer would disagree. Disagree. In Minnesota, airplanes may not be landed in city parks. Wonder what they do in case of emergency. In Mississippi, if one parent has two legi- illegitimate children, that person will go to jail for at least one month. Um. Whew. That's a lot of people in my hometown in Missouri. One may not drink in a bar between two and six a.m. in Montana. One may not pretend to abuse an animal in the presence of a minor. In Nebraska, persons with an STD may not marry. Well, we, a lot of, I mean, you know. In Nevada, sex toys are outlawed. In Nevada? In Vegas? Okay. Uh, In New Hampshire, it is illegal to collect and carry away seaweed at the beach, but only at night. So during the day, you're good to go. In New Jersey... All motorists must honk before passing another car, bicycle, skater, and even a skateboarder. I don't think that New Jersey has a problem with people not honking. In New Mexico, persons may not be able to step, spit on the steps of an opera house. In New York, it's illegal to congregate in public with one or two people while each wearing a mask or any face covering which disguises your identity. I guess that's because of V for Vendetta. In North Carolina, a marriage can be declared void if either of the two persons is physically impotent. That's actually a good law in North Dakota. One may be jailed for wearing a hat while dancing. Even if wearing a hat to function where dancing is taking place. That's so specific and probably so common. Ohio, if one loses their exotic animal, they must notify authorities within one hour. So know where you're going. Oklahoma, it's illegal for an owner of a bar to be to allow anyone else to pretend to have sex with an animal. Okay. No filming there. It's illegal to place a container filled with human fecal matter on the side of a highway in Oregon and Pennsylvania. Persons convicted of felonies may not operate bingo games. In Rhode Island, no person may bite off another's limbs. In South Carolina, a person must be 18 years old to play a pinball machine. South Dakota, movies that show police officers being struck, beaten, or treated in an offensive manner are forbidden. In Tennessee, students may not be able to hold hands at school. In Texas, wire cutters cannot be carried in your pocket. In Utah, alcohol may not be sold Uh, during an emergency. In Vermont, women must obtain written permission from their husbands to wear false teeth. In Virginia, no animal may be hunted on a Sunday with the exception of raccoons, which may be hunted until 2 a.m. and not a minute later. In Washington, x-rays may not be used to fit shoes. In West Virginia, a person may not hold public office if he or she has ever participated in a jewel that obviously is one that just never got outlawed because that was an old law. In Wisconsin, margarine may not be substituted for butter in restaurants unless it was requested by customer. All right, none of your none of your vegan stuff uh, sneaking its way in. In Wyoming, junk dealers may not make any business transactions with drunk persons. Okay, not fair. Those are some bizarre laws. Uh, when we come back uh, from the break, I've got quite a few weird things for you um, that all have to do with snakes. 
and Snake Edge. So, uh, mature content to follow, by the way. So if you're a kid, you know, don't be. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Talking about some weird laws. Weird, weird laws. Uh, and now, uh, some more weird stuff. A man in Bihar was bitten by a venomous snake. And um, after the man bit his wife in the wrist. The man's last wish was to die together with his wife. Uh, to make it happen, he tried his best. But the woman was luckily saved by doctors. However, the man died. Uh, the incident happened... In a uh, Semantispur district on Saturday. Um, so, uh, the resident of the Bursingapur village, Shankar Rai, was asleep when a lethal snake bit him. Upon waking up, he found his condition deteriorating. Suddenly turned emotional. When he realized he wasn't going to make it through, he went to his wife, Amiri Devai, and bit her hands while saying that he loved her very much and wanted to depart this world together. Both fell unconscious. Soon the couple was rushed to a local hospital where Shankar died soon. Managers managed to save... The doctors managed... Not the managers. The doctors managed to save Amari. Woman could be saved as her treatment began on time. She's safe now, Dr. J. Kent told the local media. Um, Her husband dug his teeth into her wrist. He wished to die together and wanted to remain united even after life. Uh, but his last wish wasn't fulfilled. He told me he loved me too much and wanted to die together. Before grabbing my wrist and sinking his teeth into it, and I allowed him to do so. Um, romantic or mildly horrifying? What What do you reckon? I'm going to go with the... With horrifying. Um, though this isn't, though this isn't what I'm about to say, I still feel that it uh, is applicable. There is actually a science behind couples that die close together. Um, we hear about this all the time. It happens in movies, you know. Like the notebook. Oop, did I spoil it? It came out in 2004. Get over it. That was 16 years ago. Uh, That movie is so old that it can dramatically cry in its room when it's not voted a superlative in the yearbook. So these real-life stories are everywhere. Elderly couples who've been together for most of their life passing away within a few days of each other. We're all drawn to these melancholy but heartwarming stories as a sweet reminder or perhaps even proof a true love does last forever beyond the specter of death. Is it just a coincidence? Or is there something behind this phenomenon? As it turns out, there is some actual science behind these or- these stories uh, known as the widowhood effect. It's considered by social scientists to be one of the best examples of social relations on health studies. Um, so studies from around the world... Uh, have uh, found that a rate in mortality goes up amongst mourning spouses after their loved one dies. The University of Glasgow study, which found followed 4,000 couples, found that widows and widowers were at least 30% more likely to die of any cause during the first six months following their spouse's death compared to those who did not lose a spouse. Another study considered by the most comprehensive 
on the subject, scientist Nicholas uh, Christkis of Harvard and Felix Elwert of the University of Wisconsin-Madison found that within three months after a spouse dies, the chance that the other will follow is between 30 and 90 percent. Um, the scientists analyzed nine years worth of data collected from uh, 373 um, oh sorry, no, 373,000 elderly married couples in the U.S. Their findings show that 18% increase in all-cause morality for men whose wives died first and 16% increase for women. Uh, the conclusion, the death of a spouse, for whatever reason, is a significant threat to health and poses a substantial risk of death by whatever cause. That way, the phenomenon has become so common that it's colloquial known as the broken heart syndrome. Oh, how cute. Nora Ephron is writing that as a title right now. Is, is Nora Ephron still alive? Am I dumb for not... She... She's not. She's not writing it then. Someone else is. Nicholas Sparks? He's still kicking. Nicholas Sparks. Oh, wow. She died a long time ago. That's embarrassing for me, isn't it? Nicholas Sparks is still going, right? Yeah, yeah, he's still... For sure. Yeah, okay. Nicholas Sparks is writing it. It's probably going to star Miley Cyrus. The condition nearly always follows a traumatic emotional loss, such as the death of a spouse, parent, or child. Primarily affects women. How interesting. So you're saying that women feel more strongly than men? I'm shocked and dismayed by this discovery. Um, reporter Linda Dahlstrom says, It causes chest pain and sudden heart failure believed to be brought on by a surge of fight-or-flight hormones. Uh, so a little bit too much adrenaline that is uh, shocking to the system, right? Something that often gets forgotten, the physical component of the grief, anguish, and stress that comes with the death of a spouse, the death of a spouse that you've loved most of your life, uh, is one of the most stressful events that can happen. The stress is sudden and serious enough. It can be, it can cause mental and physical ailments uh, an age body might not be able to handle. So, um, yeah, couples that have had a lifetime together, it seems like you really can die of a broken heart. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. All that science behind that. It's kind of sweet, you know, that you can die of a broken heart. I think, personally. I think it's quite sweet. Um, it does make me feel like soulmates are real, or at least, um, you know, you grow to become so connected to them that it feels real, if not actually is. I don't know. I'm not married. So, let me know. Either way, if you get bit by a snake, you know, don't, don't take your significant other down with you. You know, let them... Let them live. Maybe. Or maybe that was the most romantic thing he could have done. It's very Anthony and Cleopatra, isn't it? That story. When we come back, more snakes. But, um, a little bit of a... A little bit of a different story here. It's not so much a romance. Well, it's... I mean, yeah, it is romance, depending on what you think of snakes' romantic lives, I suppose. But it's, um, it's not, it's not quite as cute. It'd be less Nicholas Sparks and more, um, uh, Michael Bay? I don't know. When we go return. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Left off, we were talking about uh, snake bites and love, and now uh, explicit content covering your ears. Officials within the city of Lakeland have tapped off an area in Lake Hollingsworth after residents notice a large number of snakes. Regarding snakes spotted on Lake Hollingsworth near the roundabout, um, begin a. February 13th Facebook post on the official city of Lakeland Parks and Recreation page. This is this feels like a an episode of Parks and Recreation and it's an absolute shame that the show has ended because wow, what a glorious storyline this would be. Uh, it appears they have congregated for mating. They are non-venomous and generally not aggressive as long as people do not disturb them. Once the mating is over, they should go their separate ways. Ugh, tell me about it. Snakes appear to have nat- to be native water snakes. However, uh, some residents have pointed out the water moccasin nest was also spotted in the same area. While we cannot rule out the presence of other species being in that location or other locations on the lake, we be- believe the water snakes to have congregated in that area as they seem to do yearly. Uh, the city of Lakeland has since placed caution tape around the area and has plans to hang signs to warn the public about the snake or G. Um, in other snake news, a slithering centennial male python equipped with, uh, equipped with, um, an implanted tracking device in Florida um, led wildlife biologists to what they're calling a breeding aggression. All right, so another one of these. Wildlife biologist Ian Bartoski said they were tracking a Bernese python named Argo, whose days earlier helped them find a 100-pound female python ready to lay eggs. And on Valentine's Day, Argo led them to what's being called the biggest breeding aggregation ever discovered near Naples in southwest Florida. We locate him, and there's another male and another male and another male, says Bartoski, who's with the Conservatory of Southwest Florida. We know what the males are for, so where's the female? The massive, 15-foot-long, 115-pound egg-laying female was found nearby. It's a total of six male snakes. It was intense. A lot of snakes in one spot. Number of pythons, which are not endemic to Florida, which has been steadily growing for years. The aggression near Naples matches the largest found known hotbeds of the central eastern Everglades. Seven snakes were found euthanized. Um, Argo was re-released for additional tracking. The female had 60 eggs in her, and most of them would have hatched. However, it's unclear of how many of those hatchlings would have survived. Conservation has been using other pythons like Argo to help track females, which biologists are far more significant when it comes to population control because of the sheer number of eggs they can lay. Biologists said a part of what makes the pythons difficult to track is that they leave virtually no trace of their prey, small or large. Animals are swallowed whole, no carcasses left behind. 
Wildlife est experts estimate that 61% of the pythons diet are small mammals such as rabbits, possums, and raccoons. There are exceptions. In other snake news, last month, the Conserva Conservancy released photos of a Burmese python swallowing a whole deer. It's believed, believed to be the largest predator-prey ratio ever documented in the history of the Burmese python species, the conspiracy said at the time. Um, you look at some 250 pounds of python and you think, what did it take to make that? Um, he said the Conservancy removed 2,000 pounds of pythons this year with the same amount last year. It's all about removal, but it's also about research. The technology advances. We want to be able to follow the science to really have effective control. We have to learn what we can learn about them and their habits to make informed decisions. It's that time of year again. Uh, oh, here's, there's one, there's one more, one more little story, not snakes, but it is about having to stop for, um, an animal orgy. It's that time of year again when commuters slow traffic to a complete halt in an effort to watch a group of male manatees herd a female into the shallow water in a desperate attempt to make things happen. Um, this is uh, not, you know, like a, like a human one. Uh, it's very different than the way that humans behave in these situations. In case you were interested, um, they're pretty rare to see. This form of mating is called a mating ball. Uh, but it, it, motorists ended up backed up on, uh, traffic. Um, according to the Courtney Campbell Causeway, um, local, oh, sorry, according to Fox News on the, on the Courtney Campbell Causeway, uh, so uh, a couple of different news stations got some helicopters in to get an aerial view of the action. So I guess we weren't the only species celebrating Valentine's Day. This is nice, you know. Nice that that was um, the moment that we can share with our animal friends, you know. Getting to, uh, getting to become closer to them. Nope, that's weird. I didn't mean to say it like that. It's, I made it weird. Made it weird. Um, the point is, animals, you know, celebrate Valentine's Day too. Hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. I'd like to know about your, your Valentine's Day. You know, keep me up. I never know anything about you guys. I wish we could talk more about you. Podcasts aren't the radio. You can't call in, you know, but you can write in. You can leave comments. Comments that I can respond to. I'd like to respond to some comments. It gets lonely up here, guys. Just talking to myself all the time. Although it does justify my talking to myself all the time. My neighbors are worried. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a weird uh, situation with the firefighters. And to extend upon that, a couple of weird 911 calls. Um, because, uh, you know, false alarms for firefighters. I looked up and uh, it turns out that's a weird thing to look up. So instead I went for 911 in general. People are weird. People call in about weird things. It's pretty funny. So, uh, you know, don't go away. Stay tuned. Keep with us. We're going to talk about that when we get back from our break. Don't go away. We return from the break. 
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right. Before we left, we were talking about the Animal Kingdom celebrating Valentine's Day, shall we say? Yeah. Go with that. And now, to Salt Lake City, where the Salt Lake City firefighters responded to a report of a dead body in the Jordan River Surplus Canal Friday that uh, turned out to be a mannequin. Yeah. Coincidentally, the uh, the dummy belonged to the fire department. Got lost about a year ago during a water rescue training session. Officials made the most of the situation by using the mannequin to practice high water rescuing skills. Something especially relevant considering the water is running higher than usual this year. Um, so, uh... Yeah, that'd be pretty shocking, right? To think that you were rescuing a body and it turns out to be the mannequin that you lost last year, Fred, from, you know, Brigade 2. Yeah. But it's back. Um, I thought that was a very funny little story. Uh, and because of that, I was inspired to give to you the 14 most hilarious 911 calls ever placed. Uh, big feet. So, you know, get ready to, uh, to laugh. Um, people are rarely thinking clearly when they dial 911. Fear, anxiety, and outrage have a way of clouding one's thought process. We're assuming that's the excuse that people are using. Canadian woman dialed 911 after hearing yelling and shouting coming from her neighbor's apartment. When the cops arrived, they pounded on the door. When the occupant finally opened up, when they discovered he'd been having a little trouble, on the toilet. A burglar in Shelby County, Ohio, was caught by police after he accidentally butt dialed 911 while breaking into a home. Making matters worse, the crook hid in the closet but was ratted out by a phone yet again when the low battery alarm went off. Um, after receiving a frantic 911 call, um, the, uh, Local Canadian Football League Stadium in Regina, Canada. Uh, the fire department raced off to a battle at the Inferno that was apparently there. And the fire, turns out, was a burning log displayed on the stadium's giant video screen. Yeah. You know that fire screen that your dad puts on on Christmas morning because he still wants there to be a fire, but that's not a thing that happens anymore? That thing. Really tricked some people. Yeah, and you're always like, it's not realistic. We should just, you know, watch a movie. Turns out it is realistic to some. A man in Lincoln, Nebraska, learned that sometimes you have to just let it go, man. He arrived home one day to find that he'd been burgled and his favorite hookah pipes were missing. So he called the cops. Uh, but then he ended up in jail after the cops found out what kind of pants... He was growing. They were pot plants. A woman in Dakola, Georgia, contacted police when her Chevy van went missing. Later that day, the woman called back to report that the vehicle had been found. It was in her yard, hidden behind tall weeds. Yes, a van. A van went missing. She found a van in her tall weeds. A van. 
Do you know how big vans are? I don't think you're fully grasping how big vans are. That's a huge thing to find in your... Okay, whatever. After making numerous calls to 911 in Lundar, Canada, a man was warned the next one would land him in jail. That prompted him to reveal his reason for calling. If you're coming to get me, he told the dispatcher, can you bring me some smokes? To be fair, it gets pretty cold in Winnipeg, you know? It's very hard to go out of your house. It's very cold in Canada, guys. I haven't left my house in weeks. When a British man saw a mysterious flying object that lit up the sky, he immediately called the authorities. But before the police could react, he called the man back, saying the mystery was solved because the UFO was the moon. I think that guy got into the other guy's plants. That's my humble opinion. I could be wrong. Or, that man was in the famous Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, where Ron Weasley and Harry Potter had to get in a getaway car and fly away uh, because the Hogwarts train stopped for them, closed because Dobby closed it early. And a bunch of muggles saw them. So it could be that one. You know, don't be haters. You don't know. You don't know. Again, spoilers. But again, that movie came out in like, what, 2001? What does that make it? 19? That movie can drink in Canada now. Okay? Let's move on with our lives. Uh, a woman in Kalispell, Montana, uh, called the police insisting um, that her neighbor's loud music had caused her house to develop a heartbeat. So, you know, some are... Is it, who writes the Telltale Heart? Is that Poe? Telltale Heart? Yeah, you know the story with the the guy who hides um, uh, the the body in the is it is that girl and Poe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hides the body and then it starts the heart starts beating and then he can't take it and he reveals his own uh, secret that he murdered the guy. Another spoiler, but that came out you know hundreds of years ago. So let let that go. Romanian man called the police to report hearing strange noise in the house that he happened to be burgling. Uh, police arrived and arrested the man who, as it turned out, was the only one in the house. Aside from the homeowner's noisy cat. And, um, you know, ghosts. Probably. In Jacksonville, Florida, a man was so upset when a sandwich shop left the special sauce of his hero burger off um, that he called 911 twice. It was the first time, um, the first time was to ask officers to make sure a sandwich was made properly, and the second time to complain to the cops uh, that they weren't responding fast enough to his call. If you need your special sauce, you know, you need it ASAP. You don't need it, you know, in a, in a day or a month or a year, you need it now. You know, I get it. I, I get it for sure. I don't blame them. You know? So that's it for the, for that story. And when we come back, we're gonna do some more profound shower thoughts because I happen to love them. And I look forward to this at the end of every show. So, you know, just don't take it away from me. I need this. You need this. We need this. Stay tuned for the shower thoughts. Okay. 
The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hey, welcome back. Uh, before we took a nice, uh, nice little break there, we were um, talking about some weird nine one one calls, classic. And now my favorite segment: weird shower thoughts. Weird shower thoughts. I love it. I love weird shower thoughts. Weird shower thoughts of the past few days. Okay, so. We laugh at dogs getting excited, but when we hear a bark on TV, but if a TV was nonstop stream of unintelligible noises, and then someone suddenly spoke your language, you'd be pretty startled too. I hear that. Aquaman's skin is impenetrable by normal blades, bullets, and more, which makes you wonder how he got his tattoos. Whoa, good point. We live in a world where GTA is a kid's game and Candy Crush is an adult's game. What kind of a weird place are we in? Heist movies based on real heists make more money than the heist itself. Yeah, that's what they should really do. You know, make a little heist, make a little movie of it. It's weird how Kevin McAllister woke up from the sound of a car door when he couldn't hear his entire family leaving before. Yeah, what kind of deep REM sleep were you in then, you know? Um, first guy that died with life insurance. Never knew if it was a scam. Bum, bum, bum. Kids in the future probably won't make the... Sounds when they play with toy cars. They'll just say, Elon Musk, Elon Musk. Probably. Never copied and pasted text into what Microsoft Word with the intention of keeping the font and size of the original. That's true. Hot-headed is bad, but warm-headed, hearted is good. Cool-headed is good, but cold-hearted is bad. Keep your temperatures right. Must have been significantly harder to find a toddler before the invention of the airplane. Feed a toddler. Oh, not find a toddler. No, that's true. It's true, I wonder what they did. Two mind readers... I wonder what did they do? You know, what did cave people do when they were trying to feed their toddlers? I'd really like to know. Did they find for themselves? Did they know that they had to feed them? Curious. If two mind readers met, it would create a horrible feedback noise in their head. Ooh, probably, eh? <laughs> Lego was commonly, commonly cited as early inspiration for engineers. This single company is most likely influenced designs and manufacturing of all physical products available today. Uh, booking a whale watching tour is the most expensive way to watch someone breathe. Something breathe, not someone. Summer camps weren't actually vacations, they were your parents. Amen. My heaven's lowest setting is zero degrees Celsius, but it doesn't become a fridge. Pizza is something you can buy in any quantity without people questioning you. You buy one to two slices for you. you buy a whole pizza, it's for you and a friend and a family. But you buy three to four whole pizzas it's for, if it's for a party. You buy six to seven for a celebration like a wedding or graduation. Doesn't matter. That's true. What if we want six pizzas to yourself? Toothpaste falls so easily off your brush, but you can't wash it off the dra- down the drain if you want to. You don't hear much about the the original Zealand, right? What is the what what happened there? What ha- can someone explain that to me? 
You know what? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Why is it called New Zealand? Why is it called New Zealand? This is important, people. Um, oh, Sealand in Dutch. Okay. Okay. That's less exciting than I thought it was going to be. Is anybody else disappointed by that? Zealand is the province in the ne Netherlands. The Maori did not have a name for their islands as a whole. Um, so it's New Zealand. Hmm. Cool. Good to know. Dutch Explorer, Abel Tanzen. Okay. I mean, I, I feel that, you know, they should have talked about that in Lord of the Rings. Adulting is the transition from uh, not swearing around adults to not swearing around children. Uh, if the you finds diamonds or oil in your backyard, it's the government's. But if you find drugs, then it's yours. Uh, there are many guard dogs who have successfully scared off burglars that no one knows about. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio is wealthier than the man he played in Wolf of Wall Street. There is half a million different jobs in the world that we uh, pick. Our career is based on studying 10 to 15 subjects by the ages of 18 to 21. That is an excellent point. We are idiots. Anyone who says there's no wrong way to lead, load the dishwasher obviously is not married. Uh, specifically to my dad, I will add to that. Uh, it's funny how most gamers prefer keyboards which were not made to play games. Over the controllers, which were specifically made to play games with. Snoring must have been a trait that developed after we started living in a civilization because there's no way you can survive snoring in the wild without being detected by predators. That is an excellent point. The quote, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, simply stops making sense after the age of 50. Running a half marathon and running a half of a marathon are looked at very differently. Yeah, quitters, right? Schools are supposed to teach ways of thinking and not the content to be thought. Joe Rogan probably decided early in his career to shave his head rather than fighting his hair loss to avoid earning the nickname. Yes, I think you can guess it. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. If you stand waist deep in the sea, you could be wearing the whole earth as a skirt. That's good. I like that. I don't know where it is. A skirt. No. Instead of giving serial killers cool nicknames like the Night Stalker, etc. to glorify and inspire future weirdos, give them nicknames like the googly-eyed wanker. And last one, once humans colonize Mars, gamers will also have to deal with allies um, having crappy ping during, due to a different planet. Different planet game. And that's it for our Shower Thoughts of the Week. So thank you for listening to the Weird News Podcast. Uh, brought to you, of course, by the GSMC Podcast Network. Yay! I'd like to thank, thank you, you know, and, uh, and ask you to please remember to subscribe to the show and write us a nice review. And uh, read the episode if you can. It really helps us out. Also, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, and Instagram. Up, upvote these things, guys. It really, uh, really helps us if you if you can do that. Um, so you know, please do 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 that. Thank you. Have a great rest of your night. All right. Talk to you later.